On my last video, we talked about how, oh, I need to hit record, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Welcome back to Emergent Technology. My name is Andrew, thanks for joining us. On my last video, we talked about how ChatGPT, an AI chatbot, was going to plan me Christmas dinner. Much to my amazement, it did. I gave it a few things, I gave it a few variables, and it spit me out a plan, including the recipes and the ingredients list, i.e. a shopping list, and I said I would go ahead and follow it. So we went to the grocery store, we went to Costco, we got most of what we could, and then we went to Trader Joe's and we got the rest. It was about $200, which I think is, you know, a fair amount to spend on a Christmas dinner when you're feeding five to seven people and you want to have nice things like steak, shrimp, and so forth. We're back in the kitchen now. It is Christmas Eve. I did not want to make six dishes on Christmas Day, so tonight I'm going to be making some dishes to prep in advance. And I think at least what I'll be able to do is the mashed potatoes because that keeps well overnight and I can reheat it easily, I think. So what we're going to do here is take a look at the recipe itself and then decide, can I follow this as closely as possible to what it's told me? Now, I have some experience with cooking, not a ton of, prof I have no professional experience at all, but just enough experience cooking around the house, watching my parents cook, having to cook for myself that I can sort of spot major flaws, I hope, if there are any. If I think that there's an enhancement that I can make to the recipe with what I have on hand, I'm going to go ahead and try to do the enhancement. But if there's something completely wrong with the recipe, I'm not going to ruin Christmas dinner uh, in order to comply with the recipe. We're just gonna document that as a fault with the AI chatbot and move on and proceed with cooking it the correct way. So without further ado, let's move on to our first dish, the mashed potatoes. Okay, so according to ChatGPT, we need two pounds of russet potatoes, half cup of milk, quarter cup of butter, three cloves of garlic, minced, and salt and pepper to taste. I don't think that two pounds of potatoes is probably going to be enough, so I'm going to do about double the recipe. I'm gonna do four pounds of potatoes, which means I'm gonna double everything else. A cup of milk, a half cup of butter, six cloves of garlic, so probably a whole one of these guys, and salt and pepper to taste. Let's get to the peeling. We're going as planned, we're going as it says, and we're starting with peeled and cut into one inch cubes. So yeah, let's get onto the dicing. All right, it says place the potatoes in a large saucepan and cover with water. So that is what we're gonna do. So it didn't say to by how much to cover the potatoes in here, so I'm just going to assume that cover them means covered. So they are covered with water, but not by more than a little bit, not by an inch, not by two inches, they're just covered. We'll see what happens. Okay, so the next step for the potatoes is to bring the water to a boil, then reduce the heat to low and simmer potatoes for 10 to 15 minutes or until they're tender. Drain and return to the saucepan. That's what we're gonna do. I've put them in like a basket uh, steamer type thing that has no effect on how they're gonna cook. They are completely covered in water. We're not steaming them. It's gonna help me more easily take them out and drain them in a second uh, when they're done. So pretty straightforward. I think ChatGPT got this one right. I think, no reason to think otherwise yet, but we'll see, stay tuned. In the meantime, we've got to cut up some garlic. I believe it said minced three cloves for the original recipe. I'm gonna do six since we're doing a double recipe. Here it goes. All right, so now that the potato water is boiling, it says to set the heat to low and simmer the potatoes for 10 to 15 minutes. Now it's already taken this a good 15, maybe even 20 minutes to get this to a boil in the first place. So we're gonna watch this carefully just to make sure that we don't overcook the potatoes. So, we're turning down to a simmer, and we're gonna just make sure that this continues to simmer. And I'm gonna say, um, come back in 10 minutes, and if they look like they are soft enough to mash, then we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so after about 13 minutes, 12, 13 minutes of simmering after the water boiled, it appears that the potatoes are nice and tender, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take them over to the sink, we're going to remove the water, and this is not in the chat GPT instructions, I'm going to rinse them again, before I put them back in the pot to add all the other ingredients.
All right, so with our potatoes rinsed and back in the single part of the double boiler, I'm going to add the other ingredients, the calculated one cup of milk for the double recipe, the six cloves of garlic, again, doubled from three. So we double it for a stick for a half cup total. So we put all that in there and I didn't even still know that I had one of these. I've probably had this for about 15 years and I've probably used it about twice in that time, but here it is. So here goes nothing. So far, this is looking like a success. I'm gonna bring the camera in for a closer view. Looking like some real mashed potatoes here. I haven't salted or peppered yet, but we'll do that and take another, uh, actually just take a taste of it. Pretty good. Taste the garlic in there. The garlic is nice and present. Creaminess could do a little better. The creaminess could be a little bit more. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more milk and a little bit more butter and see if we can improve the uh, creaminess just a little bit on this. All right, so after adding another quarter stick of butter and a splash of milk and some more salt, we have what I think is a perfectly serviceable delicious batch of mashed potatoes. Thank you, ChatGPT. Delicious and beautiful looking batch of mashed potatoes. Here they are. Now, as I said earlier, I didn't really want to cook all of my dishes on Christmas day, which is why we just did the mashed potatoes. But there are some other things that we got from this recipe in terms of clues, like the marinade for the tri-tip. So I think what we're going to do next is try to put together that marinade, put the marinade on the tri-tip, and let the tri-tip marinate overnight because longer is always better when it comes to meat marination. All right, so according to ChatGPT, we need olive oil, red wine, soy sauce, minced garlic, diced onions, and herbs. So for the herbs, we did a little bit of a mishmash. We got a little cheat pack here from Trader Joe's. Looks easy enough. Now, trying to handle meat and marinade and a camera all at once is difficult to do in a sanitary way, even if you have a second set of hands. And my wife has been so kind as to help me out with some of this tonight. Uh, but anyway, what we have here is two individual gallon bags with two tri-tips. We did a half cup of each of the liquids. We split those in two, and then we combine all the other ingredients together. And what we have is two, Ziploc bags of tri-tips combine into one bag right here that contains about three, maybe four pounds of tri-tip meat, which we are going to cook tomorrow pursuant to the chat GPT instructions, which involves, I think, uh, broiling them since we're not gonna be using a barbecue. I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pre-cook the bacon for tomorrow because the bacon goes in the uh, deviled eggs and as a little bit of a twist on the Brussels sprouts recipe, I can add some bacon to the Brussels sprouts and the honey glaze to make for a really kind of savory, sweet combination. So uh, I'll show you that in a minute. So indeed, the only directions about the bacon in the chat GPT recipe for devil, deviled eggs was two slices of cooked bacon crumbled. Now, two slices does not sound like a lot of bacon to me, and because we are also going to be using bacon for the Brussels sprouts and we have a lot of Brussels sprouts, I'm just gonna cook probably this whole package of bacon and I'm going to be cutting it up into tiny strips, which is I think also crumbled. So let's have at it. One of my favorite kitchen implements, by the way, is this giant, giant cast iron skillet. It's much bigger than the other ones that I have and I use it for things like bacon where I wanna lay something completely flat or put a high volume of stuff in the skillet.
you can never ever have too much bacon. Getting our bacon nice and crispy here because uh, I want it to keep well and I want it to remain crispy after it's been sitting in the fridge overnight. It's still pretty hot. More bacon tax. Was the bacon tax approximately three to four slices of bacon at 8.15 on Christmas Eve? Yes, yes it was. Okay, so we have our finished bacon done and cut up, and this was an entire package of bacon minus the bacon tax. Even if the bacon tax had not been taken out of this, uh, bacon shrinks a real lot. This is what I saved for the uh, deviled eggs. Um, this is approximately, I don't know, four slices or so of bacon. And this is about the quantity that we're going to use for our batch of deviled eggs, which like the mashed potatoes, is a double batch. Um, doesn't seem like a lot of bacon for basically a dozen eggs worth of deviled eggs, but hey, we'll see. This is a chatbot experiment, right? And then this other bag of bacon, which is more coarsely cut, is for the Brussels sprouts. This is my own addition to the ChatGPT recipe. And we'll just toss these on there at some point where it feels appropriate. That's all the prep that we have on this Christmas Eve. We'll see you in the morning. All right, Merry Christmas. It is Christmas morning, and we are about to begin preparation for the rest of our ChatGPT Christmas meal. And we have here a number of things that we're gonna have to get done today, and it is critical that we do them in the right order. And of course, ChatGPT was no help whatsoever. I even tried asking ChatGPT to help me out with the order, and it just sort of, it fell apart at that point. So this is up to us. We have a baked brie with cranberry topping, grilled shrimp with lemon and garlic marinade, deviled eggs, roasted Brussels sprouts, green beans, herb infused olive oil, and a tri-tip to cook. Where do we begin? So I'm thinking one of the things that preserves easily for a few hours in the fridge and that we can just get out of the way is the deviled eggs. Place the eggs in a single layer in a saucepan and cover them in cold water Bring the water to a boil, then reduce heat to low and simmer the eggs for 10 to 12 minutes. Drain the eggs and rinse under cold water until they are cool to the touch. Then you peel them, cut them in half, remove the yolks, place them in a bowl, mash the yolks and fork with a fork and stir in the mayo, mustard, pickles, and bacon. Spoon or pipe the yolk mixture into the egg whites. Uh, sprinkle the deviled eggs with paprika and serve. Uh, this sounds like a pretty boilerplate um, recipe for deviled eggs in my experience. Um, it wants you to mix the bacon. I would top with the bacon, which I think we're just gonna do because it looks better. Um, topping with the bacon and maybe even topping with the pickles as well. Um, so yeah, we, we're gonna wing this a little bit um, just to improve the, the appearance of the dish. You know, in the end, it's all going into your, uh, your mouth anyway. So it's just a matter of uh, the, the kind of a texture and impression that you get when you first bite into it. And I think it's better to have the, the bacon and the pickles on top. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Um, as for the preparation of the eggs themselves, this says to cover them in water and bring them to a boil. Um, there's other ways to do this. You can steam them like in the double boiler that I used last night for the uh, potatoes. I think we're just going to follow the instructions, right? Cool. Let's do it. All right, so we've got our paprika for topping. We've got our mayo and Dijon mustard. And then we've got our pickles and we've got our um, bacon bits that we made last night. So it should be a uh, pretty straightforward deviled eggs recipe. Okay, timer is just about finished for the eggs here. After that, we're going to peel them, slice them in half, and proceed with the directions. It's still hot to the touch, actually. So that was an error on my part. I really thought those eggs were cool to the touch. They were not. As soon as I tried to peel one, it did not want to peel, 
and I got my thumb into it and almost got burned because the egg was so hot still. So we're just gonna rinse these until they are actually cool. This is horrendous. What is wrong with these? Google, are eggs that are undercooked or overcooked easier to peel? This is egg carnage. We're gonna have to do it again. Okay, so there were some serious issues trying to peel the eggs, and I think the eggs were probably undercooked. Basically, the search results were saying that if you overcook hard-boiled eggs, they do uh, peel more easily, but you get dry yolks. So maybe there's a silver lining in this because the yolks that I did get out of these eggs were perfect in consistency and texture, so I'll use those to make the fillings. And I've salvaged some of the whites from about, I don't know, four eggs or so and uh, I'm going to uh, cook six more eggs, use the whites from those, and we'll have a happy mishmash of deviled eggs, I think. All right, so uh, what I have so far doesn't look too bad and doesn't taste too bad, actually. Uh, one of the things I've found so far with the uh, recipe is that it totally undershot the amount of mayo that you need to make a creamy consistency for the filling. So I like tripled the amount of mayo, although the amount of mustard was pretty much okay. So let's take a look at the, uh, the deviled eggs, the half batch or third batch that I have so far, while the next batch of eggs boils to maybe more perfection. Once these eggs begin to boil, I think what I'm going to do is instead of taking them out at 10 minutes, I'm going to let them boil an extra five minutes. That sounds like a lot of extra time. That's 50% more time. But what I found is that the whites were almost underdone on these. They're not underdone, but they're like almost to the point where they could be. And if I just boil them quite a bit longer, then I should get them to the consistency that'll make them easy, easy enough to peel and to make uh, eggs that are a little bit more stiff when you hold them in your hand. Eggs have a minute and 45 seconds to go until they're done. And I think I know why the first batch kind of cracked. It's because I dropped them in the pan too hard when I put them in. Makes sense. Like, what do people do with the extra filling on deviled eggs? I don't understand. There's always more than you can fit in the egg. All right, so the chat GPT deviled eggs are done. And I have to say, Aside from some serious skill issue, uh, this took about an hour, an hour and a half longer than I thought it would. They're done and they look delicious. They taste delicious. I don't see anything wrong with them compared to any other deviled eggs I've ever had. Um, the only thing is I wish there were some tips and tricks in some of these recipes like boil the eggs longer to make them easier to peel. But I think that's just knowledge or something you get in a food blog rather than just a recipe book. So I don't know, it's maybe just a level of expectations I need to set for chat GPT recipes, but they're done, they look amazing, and they're going in the fridge. Bye. All right, next I'm gonna do something to prepare for later for serving the appetizers. This is the baked brie with cranberry and pecan topping. Very, very simple. One round of brie, half cup of cranberry sauce, half cup of chopped pecans, and you stick it in the oven this says to put it in a baking dish or baking sheet lined with parchment paper. One other thing that I've seen people do is to wrap part of the brie in foil so that it doesn't burn. Um, I might do that because I only have one brie and I'm not, the Costco's closed on Christmas. So uh, I don't wanna mess this up. I might put foil around it, but everything else looks pretty good to be honest. I'm gonna go ahead and prep this. This just says to spread the cranberry sauce over the top and sprinkle with pecans. I think that's a little weird actually. Um, I think I'm gonna cut open the brie and cut the top off and then put the stuff inside of it and let it bake that way. That's how I've seen it done. Um, I'm not just gonna put the stuff on top. That's weird, right? Like. All right, so for the baked brie, I cut the top off a little bit put the cranberry sauce on the inside, put the pecans on top, put the top back on. I'm gonna show you that before I wrap the foil around the edges.
All right, there's my brie kind of protected. When we're ready to bake it, we're just gonna pop it in the toaster oven. All right, so next up on our AI Christmas dinner list, we have grilled shrimp with lemon and garlic marinade. And I think this is about the time to prepare the marinade for the shrimp. It says to marinate them for 30 minutes to one hour. Ingredients next. So being that we have two pounds of shrimp, I'm going to double the recipe for everything. Looks like we need three tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of lemon juice, a clove of garlic, a teaspoon of dried oregano, and salt and pepper. So I'm just gonna double everything. So the first step was actually to peel and devein the shrimp. Fortunately, the shrimp that we bought were already deveined. I just had to peel them, made quick work of it. We've got our lemons. Fortunately, we have a couple lemon trees in the backyard. Nice and ripe right now, perfect. In a small bowl, whisk together the olive oil, lemon juice, garlic, oregano, salt, and pepper. Place the shrimp in a large receivable bag or a shallow dish and pour the marinade over it. Marinate the shrimp in the fridge for 30 minutes to one hour. That's looking like some pretty good shrimps. Can you see the stress in my eyes? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But it is now officially 90 minutes until our family company shows up for Christmas dinner. It's 11.30 in the morning and a lot of the prep is going well so far. The directions seem to be pretty logical, uh, but we still have several steps to go before we can serve any of this because none of it is actually cooked yet aside from the mashed potatoes. So um, right now we're gonna go for the green beans. We need one pound of green beans, we're doubling that. Olive oil, slivered almonds, zest of one lemon, salt and pepper to taste. We are boiling a pot of water as it says. We are essentially going to blanch the green beans it sounds like I think that's what blanching is, three to four minutes until they are crisp, tender. Drain the green beans and rinse them under cold water till they're cool to the touch. And then we're going to cook the almonds in a skillet until they're golden brown and add the green beans and toss them with the almonds and oil, lemon zest, season with salt and pepper. I'm going to add garlic because I like garlic and garlic adds to any vegetable dish. Um, that I can probably do now and reheat um, and yeah, that's our next step. We have a zester, don't we? The recipe here says slivered almonds. We could not find them at Trader Joe's. I have raw almonds. I'm not gonna spend all the time to sliver these individually. So I'm gonna do the next best thing, which is the Ninja food processor. Okay, we need an actual blade for this. These are definitely not slivered, but we will make do. Oh no, don't burn, please don't burn, please don't burn, please don't burn. Oh my God, so. I damn near burn these, but they look beautiful. Ooh, pretty! Try one of the almonds or whatever. So here's a recipe I've never done before, which is the herb infused olive oil. We're taking some uh, mixed fresh herbs, such as rosemary, thyme, basil, and parsley, finely chopping them, and we're going to add a little bit of garlic to that. And then apparently what we're going to do is going to heat the oil just warm to the touch, and then sift everything out, strain everything out. Should be easy enough. Here we've got some shrimp looking pretty good here. I'm pretty happy with how these are turning out so far. They're in. We're currently preparing the Brussels sprouts and the deviled eggs have gone over very well so far, as has the herb-infused olive oil. So, so far so good, this is great. 
Okay, so now we're on to the uh, drizzle for the Brussels sprouts. Toss the Brussels sprouts with olive oil, salt, and pepper. Spread the Brussels sprouts in a single layer baking sheet. Roast them 20, 25 minutes. Then you whisk together the honey, mustard, and vinegar. Okay, so it's at the end. Yeah. Right now we have the dressing, or the glaze rather, for our Brussels sprouts. And we're going to brush this over the Brussels sprouts and return them to the oven for an additional five to 10 minutes after they're done until the glaze is bubbly and nice and hot. So um, then we're gonna put bacon on top of everything too. So we got it. Okay, eight to 10 minutes per side is totally not right. This has been in there about 25 minutes for one side, and I'm gonna flip it and do probably another 20 minutes or so. All right, the tri-tip is now out of the oven and resting. It is probably a good medium rare to rare in the middle, and then, uh, you know, medium, medium well on the edges. And uh, after it rests, we'll uh, go ahead and carve it up. The first batch of mashed potatoes reheated nicely, and uh, the second one's in the microwave right now. Here are the Brussels sprouts, which uh, didn't exactly crisp up how I'd expect them to, but are also very delicious. All right, this is what a chatbot Christmas dinner looks like here. We've got our baked brie appetizer, we've got our mashed potatoes, we've got our Brussels sprouts, we've got our tri-tip, we've got our bread, and our infused olive oil over here, more mashed potatoes, and our green beans. All ready to eat. All right, a quick recap on the Christmas dinner. It was a huge success. There are parts of it that were not ideal, that is true, but there were no complaints about the food overall, which to me is a success. All right, let's talk about the appetizers. The baked brie was fantastic. I still liked cutting the hole in the top, which was not in the directions, but fine. I'll give it a pass on that one. The grilled shrimp with a lemon garlic marinade. I feel like this was a very forgiving recipe. I didn't pat dry the shrimp, I didn't grill them, and they still came out great when I put them in a pan and cooked them. Perfect. The deviled eggs with pickles and bacon. Uh, this was a great recipe. I think all the issues that I encountered were pretty much my own problem. Uh, I give this a really high score. They were delicious. They all got consumed in very, very quick time. The vegetables. We'll start off with the roasted Brussels sprouts. To me, this was as close of a bust as you can get within this whole recipe set, and it was still pretty dang good, so I'm not going to complain about it. But for whatever reason, probably my technique again, I'm not getting those Brussels sprouts to really crisp up like I want them to. Oh well, people thought they were delicious. Uh, there was a nice zing in the dressing, which none of us had ever done before with Brussels sprouts, and everyone seemed to appreciate it. Mashed potatoes came out great. People commented that the garlic amount was really nice. Um, I like the garlic too. I put it in pretty much all vegetable dishes that I make. Uh, so that came out great, especially considering it was a very, very simple, like, four-ingredient recipe. And then lastly, on the sides, we have our green beans with lemon zest and almonds. Um, I came really close to ruining this and fortunately did not. Um, I kept it warm in the toaster oven before I served it. Worked totally fine. I forgot to uh, cold bath the uh, green beans before I put them into the uh, almond and olive oil. Totally fine. They were not overly soft. They were not overdone. Um, they came out perfect. It was kind of a new flavor set. I'd never done toasted almonds before. So uh, I was happy with it. Everybody was happy with it. In the process of cooking the tri-tip, we kind of got caught up and didn't video much of it. One of them went in the toaster oven on broil at the highest setting with just the top burner. The other one went in the oven at 350. Um, my biggest mistake, I think, is that the one that came out of the toaster oven, we did not let it rest for long enough. So there was a lot of juices coming out of the meat as we cut it up. Later on, when we took the oven tri-tip out, 
we did let that one rest for quite a bit longer and when we cut it up it was perfect there were no leaking juices anywhere and it was just fantastic so had we followed the instructions to exactly what they said um, we probably would have done a little bit better on the first try tip but they all came out great everyone liked how tender it was it was just a good cut of meat overall thanks costco and um, yeah everyone enjoyed it all right now let's talk about the dessert we bought a cheesecake from a young woman here in sonoma county who put herself through college debt-free selling cheesecakes college confectionista cheesecakes and they're not cheap but they are the best cheesecakes you will ever eat i mean they're so so good this one was a little bit fancier we served that on its own alongside the frozen custard that we bought from the french bakery the frozen custard was a pear chocolate swirl and almond frozen custard very much like an ice cream and the chat gpt instructions suggested serving it along with some caramel sauce so I did buy some caramel sauce. We did serve it with that. I thought it was great. Uh, overall, the dessert was a huge hit. It was extremely decadent, very rich, but we all ate our share and then some. So Christmas dinner, wow. Uh, this was a huge, huge success. Delicious, everybody took leftovers home. There were no complaints. Everyone loved the flavor. Could have done a better job on a couple things, but you know what, I'm not gonna complain, so. Anyway, hope everyone had a great holiday. Thanks for stopping by and watching Emergent Technology. I know this has been a long video, so if you've made it this far, please do not forget to hit like, consider subscribing to our channel. Have you ever considered making a dinner that was all planned out by AI? If so, let us know. That's it for now. Thanks again for watching. Cheers.